Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to learn about tricky CSS interview questions. I've already made a series on commonly asked CSS interview questions and their answers. But if you really wanted to prepare for CSS, you need to be ready for some tricky ones. You need to know these questions that I'm about to show you. So welcome to Taxi Tutorials. Well, usually I like to start with a simpler one, but let's start with a trickier one this time. So the first question is remove default space between two inline block elements. I would suggest stop the video, uh, try it out, and then look at the answer that I'm, I'm about to present you. So I have some uh, HTML and some CSS. Uh, and you can see here that there's some space in between. Sometimes you want to control this space and uh, for that, you need to remove it. First trick is remove actually space from the actual syntax. So if I just remove it like this, you would notice that the space kind of goes away. But this kind of messes up our formatting, so we don't want to do that. Another way to do it is I can see there are about four or five pixel gap. So if I add some negative margin, minus four pixel, that would remove it. Maybe it's less than that, maybe it's three pixel right? It depends on the font size. Uh, the third way is the reason it's happening is because of the font size, as you know. So if I made this font font size zero uh, by adding a, a parent additional element at the top, and I'm going to make the font size equal to zero pixel. Obviously, now my text doesn't get displayed. So I have to I have to add uh, font size size is I can actually make it 15 and that would remove the space from here. So this is another way of doing it. All right, so here's the next question, how to manage z indexes in an app? It's an important question. It's an abstract question, but it's a tricky one. Uh, if you're not a seasoned CSS programmer, then you probably haven't managed z indexes the way the right way, right? So uh, by asking this question, interviewer would see through you. And so you need to be prepared for this answer. And if you're not using the indexes right way, then you need to start using it. So uh, I would suggest pause the video, think about it, and then you can compare your answer with mine. For example, for this website, if I click here, uh, this menu shows up. So this has a higher uh, stacking order. So if I were to define something like this, uh, people may do something like this. Menu Z index is 20. And if I have a modal, which actually goes over everything, I can have Z index as 100. And if I have header, I can have its Z index to be 10. The only problem with this method is I am hard coding this, uh, which is really dangerous. And then a lot of people would just do this when something doesn't work. If you're using SAS, I can create variables like this. And instead of hard coding like this, Wherever I'm using this modal, I can simply use this variable, this. So this is how I can manage my Z index. The third thing is you need to keep gap in between. Just in case if you later on, you have to add some other context that goes in between. Let's say if I'm going to have something in between this two, if I didn't define that with enough space, then I have to shuffle all those numbers. So instead, if I have some a new one coming in, Let's say I'm going to call it X, Y, Z because I don't know the name. Uh, I can, you know, have it like this if I have enough space. Uh, how much space you want to keep is up to you, uh, about 25 or 100. Okay, this next question, I included this. It's not a tricky question, but it, I included this uh, because it's an important one, especially nowadays. I was asked this question once and I, I was caught by surprise and I always thought that this was the job of a designer. Uh, early in my career, uh, but I was so wrong. And it's so important to know this as a developer nowadays. So the question is, how do you plan for accessibility in your CSS? Now, there is no right or wrong answer. What the interviewer is trying to find out is, do you know this? Have you used this? And what are the, some of the common things that you think of when you uh, think of accessibility? First of all, for any given project, a specific access accessibility plan is designed by a product team. So they would come up with a idea say, oh, we're gonna we're gonna follow this particular guide, and you can find the checklist for it. Uh, accessibility coverage is basically you you uh, prepare your website for 
uh, different kind of disabilities, whether it's a visual, auditory, speech, and other, right? And consistency is very important. Based on that, you can, when you build, when you're building and developing and designing your components, at that time, you need to think about these things. Uh, and some of the things would be like a keyboard navigation, uh, text alternative. So if you have images and icons, you need to provide alt tags. You need to have a specific, uh, sufficient contrast between your background and your text or images. Um, the size of the element, the space between them, uh, the readability of the font size and all that stuff, right? And that, that could be so many. As, as I said, there's no perfect answer, but as long as you can explain a few things, I think this would be good. The next question is, give me a use case for using important in your CSS. What are the specific use cases for using this? And this is an important one. I was asked this a couple of times and it can get tricky. So stop the video, think about it, and you can compare your answer with mine. All right, so the answer is, uh, avoid using it as much as possible. Uh, I would say nowadays, don't even use it because you can solve this issue by using specificity. Why do you use important or a lot of people use it? They want to overwrite certain behavior or certain style, right? That is impacted by some other part of the code and they don't understand it because they don't understand the specificity. But if you understand the specificity, you can design your CSS based on that to avoid using important. And important, uh, it basically adds much higher specificity to your element, and that's all it does, right? And also the last thing is don't admit that you use it nowadays. Uh, just say you don't even <laughs> don't use it at all, right? Even if you're using sometimes. This is a bad practice. You should not be using it. The next question is, why would you use following syntax? Uh, so here's how a dot el dot el. Pause the video, think about it, and you can compare your answer with mine. Uh, this is actually answer to the previous question. How to increase the specific specificity uh, to avoid using important. Uh, you can, there are many different ways to do it, uh, but this is a, one of the ways. You can increase the specificity by, you know, doing this. If I have an element. All right, so here's a great example. I have an element with two classes and they both have conflicting styles. One has uh, color blue and another have color green. And as you can see, uh, the second one is applied because uh, it's following the first one. So I have the color green. But if I want this element to have uh, precedent, uh, if I want the color to be blue, I would simply do EL and it would become blue because I, I increase the specificity by, by doing it. And the next question is also on specificity. Uh, I guess specificity is something that is so important. And if you don't understand that, you don't understand CSS. That's why I'm trying to have more questions on that. So the next question is increase specificity of class or ID uh, without changing any, uh, adding more specificity to the class, right? You keep as it is, uh, but do something with ID so that uh, you would lower the specificity of ID. Uh, so just think about it and you can compare your answer with mine. So here's an example. If I have a, a div with two with a class and an ID, and I'm providing conflicting styles for ID, the color is green, and then for class, the color is blue. Now, obviously, the ID has you know has higher specificity because it's an ID, and then um, class. That's why it's 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 green. But if I want to change the specificity, uh, instead of using uh, this syntax, I can use attribute prompt syntax where I can say ID equal to my ID and now uh, the color <laughs> is changed to, to blue. So this is how you can lower the specificity of ID. Now it's no longer that that ID is in just another attribute. So somehow CSS see it differently. Okay, here's an interesting question. Uh, the interviewer asked you, what is your favorite CSS resources? Um, basically, they want to know when you get in trouble or you don't know something, uh, how would you find your answer? The reason to ask this question is to find out what's a typical method. Uh, a seasoned engineer uh, would do things differently than somebody who is just a novice, right? So uh, let's say if you say, I usually go to W3 school, which means you your knowledge of CSS is pretty basic. Uh, I, I, one person said Google one time, uh, some some people might say stack Stack Overflow, 
which is fine, I guess. But those who are seasoned, they may say something like um, MDN, like Mozilla Development Network, uh, which is advanced, or CSS Trick, which is pretty popular. So, I mean, again, there's no right or wrong answer. This is a way to find out some information about the interviewee. Uh, here's an interesting one as well. Uh, they want to know uh, the level of your understanding of uh, cross-browser testing. They would ask you, how do you do cross-browser testing? The answer is, again, there are multiple ways to do it. You know, you can use a dedicated machine for testing, especially for IE. You can use virtualization or, or uh, you can use browser stack or you can use Docker because if you are a CSS guy, then you would have to deal with this testing methods anyway. So this is actually a good question to understand how hands-on you are. And lastly, somebody can ask you, and I've, I've heard of a few people that have been asked, uh, CSS battle. So what is that, uh, you might ask? So this would be uh, through this website called CSS battle. They may ask you to implement something very complex. I mean, it, it can be complex or simple, depends on which example you get but it's almost like a lit, co lit code version for CSS. <laughs> you know, they may ask you, give you a design, say, hey, can you build this uh, using CSS? And it's to match the exact uh, design. And you can, you can see pixel by pixel. If you prepare for it, just do a couple of them uh, and see how long does it take. And this would actually make you a really good CSS engineer. Um, so I would definitely try. Uh, by the way, I'm planning uh, as a separate video uh, I'm planning for like a CSS battle video where two of my subscribers would battle out for for a specific building specific CSS. Obviously, you're going to do it on a separate time, but I can combine them to see how their approach and everything side by side. So if you're interested, uh, feel free uh, to email me and we can do the recording and I can publish that video. Uh, but make sure that you are confident with CSS and you have practiced a little bit. And the prize would be a t-shirt. Um, I have a Texit t-shirt, um, so the winner gets a, a Texit t-shirt. And I hope you learned something new from this video. And if you did, please like, subscribe, and provide a nice comment. Uh, you can follow me on Facebook. I have multiple groups that you can join and enjoy the, enjoy the conversation or ask questions. Um, you can also follow me on, on Twitter. Uh, it's Texit one handle and you can check out my Medium uh, post uh, via this link. And you can actually register for my couple of my classes. I have one on React and one on JavaScript. And thank you for watching.